Topic is development of head of displays. A dream come true for indigenous development. Uh, I think this is the penultimate session of the entire talk, and uh, with uh, the COVID pandemic around. Uh, the, the the online presence and online interactions have become the new uh, talk of the day. However, uh, it misses that personal approach, uh, which 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 basically used to create some uh, social interaction also and and the feel of actual what it is about. But still, uh, it is a good medium which is which has basically enabled learning during this period of the pandemic. So. Uh, Today's uh, the outline of my talk today is uh, what is the need for indigenization? Actually, uh, the program head up display program is for a strategic use and it is more about indigen indigenization. It is more about reducing the dependency on imports. It is more about uh, becoming self sustaining in terms of service and maintenance as well as uh, um, shelf life improvements and all those things. So uh, we will talk about development of head of display for strategic applications. Uh, and uh, during this journey, I will start with what is actually the need of hard in case of an aircraft, its composition, challenges, and features. And uh, I will also discuss two of the uh, inbuilt uh, software modules, which, which, which are integral part of the head of display on which I have actually worked. And uh, they are they are they are working fine and are flying in Tejas aircraft as well as uh, JT thirty six Hawkeye and we are we are also working to penetrate into a lot many other aircraft lines for this particular purpose. So uh, starting with what is actually indigenous indigenization is so indigenous is, is a, has been derived from two ancient Greek words uh, Indo uh, meaning inside and or within and genus means birth. So, uh, and the importance or relevance of uh, relevance of indigenization is more, especially in case of strategic sector, because wherein uh, you want to depend on yourself for to save yourself or to protect your boundaries and all those things. So, uh, indigenization has a lot of impact in defense, aeronautical, nuclear, and space sectors. Indigenization is also important in medical sector, uh, and and here, however, uh, the purpose is more related to the cost. And then in the industrial sector, it is about enabling exports. In agricultural sector, it is about enhancing the livelihood of the people. And in IT sector, basically, uh, it is more of a service sector. But uh, but but indigenization, if 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 properly implemented at the level of uh, development tools, uh, it will be a boon. However, still IT sector is the biggest employer as on date. So why indigenization is required? Actually, if 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 I talk from the point of view of the strategic area, so uh, fact of making something native. Um, and, and it it actually helps it, it keeps the world in a in a, in a, in a, in a question mark about what are your capabilities and it actually empowers you transformation of ideas and services and a very important feature is employment generation indigenization no doubt leads to employment generation and and with, with the population of our country and uh, employment being a major issue this is a major hallmark then capability to manufacture the product uh, in, in in terms of uh, your your uh, uh, you, you have seen that india when did the nuclear explosion in 1999 there were a lot of sanctions so uh, we uh, our supply lines were um, somehow cut down in a second in a quarter of iota of second as we were dependent on others the more we are we are able to produce things ourselves more of our dependence will be go going down then supply of services within the country instead of relying on foreign manufacturers. In case of defense, I can tell you that uh, even petty repairs cost huge money to the exchequer because a uh, lot of distances are involved, a lot of movements are involved, a lot of regulatory approvals are involved. So, so if, if there is something inside, uh, that is a great help for the process, for the defense manufacturers and so on. Then forex saving, these days forex saving is not much issue, but uh, the one thing which I would rely or which I uh, put more importance on is opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is something that uh, many a times what happens is if you, if, you have, if you don't have certain capability, 
you don't have certain capacity then the cost of a product is many a times more in international markets because uh, there are there are there are there are a lot of issues of technology denial but once you make a thing for example in case of head up display the, the day we made it the day we made it the international pricing for india was halved and it is although we may import certain things but but they come at a Uh, at, at, at a fraction of the original cost at which they were being offered when you didn't have the capability to manufacture it. So that has been a great impact on the strategy area. Specifically in this, uh, there are a lot of issues of obsolescence. If you talk, if you if you talk from the point of view. Of I'm sorry. Uh, these things are bound to happen uh, when you are in your office. so uh, issues of obsolescence is a very big issue in case of defense uh, because you see a uh, lot of aircraft which we have been using we have been using for many years make 21 is called many a times uh, flying flying thing but uh, but uh, there are lot many parts of it which are not available as on day so that is a big issue with uh, imports technology denial in case of any event is another issue then you have restricted trade operations uh, the countries restrict trade in case of defense and then there are monopoly issues that they don't want to share economic uh, self reliance increasing the gdp and generation of employment these all are the impacts of indigenization what is usually the journey of self reliance uh, in this connected world it is it seldom happens that that you come up with something um, something which is which is very much unique or 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 uh, out of box but usually the 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 the, the, the route has been the model which if you see the in development of indian defense sector this has been the route that we important thing then we started to reverse engineer them then we started license production we had our we started our own r&d setups and finally we had a self reliance in many areas not only head up display is one which i i am associated with but there are many areas in which a uh, country has achieved self reliance with progressive r&d uh, over the period of years this is one testament of our success uh, tejas uh, was flown by air chief somewhere in 2016 and uh, this was the first time that the aircraft uh, the air chief flown in it and uh, lca in fact has been one of the one of the major breakthrough aircraft even in all those sorties till date it has never failed good morning i am taking an online so uh, indigenization of head up display is 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 one thing uh, which just a moment please so uh, till now uh, csio has successfully indigenized the um, head up displays of two aircrafts lca air force and ajt air force lca as you all know is tejas and uh, basically the csio had if you can see it takes the central position the, the, the main real estate of the aircraft belongs to the head up display and it is basically a transparent see through device which enables the pilot to see uh, minute uh, details and which are critical to him during the flight operations so these are the two laurels for our institute uh, one is the lc air force head up display and uh, second is the ajt 36 uh, hindustan jet trainer air force uh, yeah, head up display similarly we have also done it for hawk i hawk is it is basically an indigenized version of uh, hawk aircraft from you uh, from britain so uh, however the issue is that it is a long drawn process if you if you want to develop something for the strategic sector it is not a simple process it is a very long drawn process and if i talk about the case of tejas uh, you might all be aware or uh, i don't know uh, that aeronautical development agency bangalore is the project coordination and funding agency for uh, tejas it is a special purpose vehicle of defense research and development organization then uh, in case of hard line replaceable unit uh, csio is the design agency then we have semilac and rcm semilac is center for military aerodynamics and certification 
and uh, its regional center for military awareness is in Chandigarh. It is basically the design approval and inspection agency which is involved at the white box level. So they, they, they basically are involved at the design level, they approve our designs, they certify our designs, they are with us at every step when we go for design changes, when we go for testing and everything. Then you have the next actor called DGAQA, Director General Aeronautical Quality Assurance. These are basically quality inspectors who are involved once your device is matured and goes into the production. And these are guys, we are basically involved at the black box level. So uh, they are more or more more uh, interested in the inputs, the reliability of the inputs, and the quality of the output. Then, uh, in our case, uh, we have engaged uh, a defense PSU named Bharat Electronics as a production agency. So uh, this is a huge teamwork, and uh, this teamwork has paid well for us. And the LRU costing around 60 to 70 lakhs have been developed indigenously. And it has gone into production and is successfully flying in Tejas aircraft. It is coming, it is going to fly in IGT 36, it is going to fly in Hawkeye and so on. So, uh, usually, what is the journey in terms of milestones? If I talk about uh, developing something for the As usual, uh, initially we have a project sanction and uh, this sanction usually in our case is given by either ADA or HAL, uh, the R&D division of HAL uh, in Bangalore. Then initially we go for a preliminary design review. This preliminary design review stage basically defines the overall controls of the design which, 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 which are in accordance with the requirement and specification given by the forces or by the uh, development agencies. After working on this preliminary design, we come up with a critical design. So this critical design basically is the step at which in, a, in coordination with RCA maybe freezes the overall design parameters of the unit. And the first and major uh, step in, 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 in the development is a development of a form fit functional unit, which we call FFF unit. This form fit functional unit is a unit uh, which is dimensionally in accordance with the with what is required and uh, gives you the performance which is also required but at this stage uh, this unit cannot go into flying or it cannot be implemented into the services the next very important stage in case of uh, defense development is a safety of flight stage what safety of flight stage is that every unit which wants to be part of an aircraft should be able to withstand a number of environmental electromagnetic interference, electromagnetic compatibility, as well as other uh, critical design, uh, design uh, considerations. So for this, we have to go for SOFT, safety of flight tests. These safety of flight tests include electromagnetic interference uh, compatibility, electromagnetic compatibility. It also includes a whole lot of uh, environmental tests, including, uh, if I say humidity tests, uh, high altitude tests, sand tests, sun radiation, solar radiation tests, and there's a huge list. And this is one of the most critical stage in the life cycle of a development of something for the defense. And this stage typically takes a lot of time because in our country, we don't have the testing facilities at one place and 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 they are this was all over the country and any failure at any stage brings us back to the ground zero so uh, this is a very important milestone uh, which which we have successfully crossed in case of lca as well as in case of ijt 36 we are on the path to uh, success in case of hawkeye and uh, similar and 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 also uh, certain other uh, end of life replacements in Donia's as well as. So once this is done, that burning unit, which we call safety of flight unit, uh, that burning unit is certified by the agencies for safety of flight. Then 
once this sof is done we come up with a new unit called yavadi unit yavadi unit is actually the someone something which goes into the aircraft for test flights so these yavadi units are minimally tested for vibrations as well as uh, environmental uh, minimal environmental test and then once they are cleared by the concerned rcma at chandigarh which is the design partner and then uh, there is one rcma aircraft in bangalore so th those are the guys basically who, who give the final certification for some installing something into the aircraft so then we go for the test flight and the test flight is again a long saga it takes long lot of time once it is done uh, the unit and the aircraft goes into lst limited series production and after the maturity of limited series production for a for a for a quanta of time finally the things goes into production so this is a long journey and uh, our institute and our team has been involved in this entire journey since long and we are improvising with newer products newer things which which, which are basically need of the hour as per the requirement so uh, first uh, i think uh, since i am always immersed with head up this place uh, so so I, I i i i i always believe that you you all participants also know that but for the sake of your knowledge uh, what is a display actually so display is something which presents the status of a man machine system and in a modern cockpit there are a lot of displays which are available which which basically we call uh, which are which are uh, fdds hsds and msds and all these displays are, are are basically classified as hdds head down displays why we call them head or head down displays because to look into those displays the pilot has to change his line of sight whereas uh, on the contrary we have a head up display in the aircraft which 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 is basically a device which displays the aircraft information on a transparent display superimposed on the outside world view of the pilot and this does not require the pilot to change his line of sight he can continue watching the outside world as well as he is able to read the information which is available to him on his transparent display so head up display basically displays flight information in a collimated form i will i will uh, uh, detail about what do i mean by collimated uh, you all might be aware in a collimated form so that the pilot can view this information superimposed on his view of the outside world it is an essential lru uh, what i mean by lru is line replaceable unit actually in, in an aircraft uh, cockpit there are a lot of instruments and they are configured so that they act like a line replaceable unit if you switch off a particular device the performance of all other devices are not impacted and around there are around 250 lrus in an lca cockpit so all of those them are independent of each other it does not impact the performance or execution of any other uh, device and so they are named lrm the logic behind uh, displaying the flight information in a collimated form is that we we actually focus the image at infinity the purpose behind focusing the image in infinity is that it it should not lead to tunneling vision of the pilot the pilot should not be so immersed into the display that that he forgets outside world so uh, we 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 basically uh, focus the image at infinity thereby uh, the image the image does not disturb him it merges well into the outside view and the pilot is able to comfortably see both the things if i basically uh, if i go to uh, aircraft orientations so uh, an aircraft basically um, has movements in all three directions uh, which we call as roll pitch and yaw so uh, and and they are basically uh, nahi they are controlled by they are controlled they are controlled by 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 the various controls in the aircraft which we call ailerons rudder and the elevators so the pitch is controlled with the help of the elevators in the back in the yaw is controlled with the ailerons in the wing and the uh, uh, sorry uh, by the rudder and 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 the roll is controlled by the aileron the role of hud is to improve situational awareness of the pilot and i will detail out how it improves the situational awareness of the pilot so this is a typical navigation page of the uh, of of a hud up head up display it shows the pilot with acceleration air speed 
A Mac number, you might all be knowing that Mac number is basically uh, the speed uh, ratio of the speed of the vehicle to the speed of the sound. And then, uh, then, then you have flight path marker, uh, a circle with wings, which represents uh, the, the aircraft. You have pressure readings, you have altitude readings, you have pitch lines, heading, and all those things. Now, why HUD is required? If I talk about why HUD is required, it is about, it is needed uh, wherever the pilot has a higher workload. In case of uh, a fighter, uh, he has a higher workload in flying and navigation, aiming and firing weapons, takeoff and landing and then uh, you have something called raster mode. Raster mode is basically for uh, night flight and it uses the in, uh, output from a infrared uh, camera uh, installed at the front of the aircraft to, 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 to display uh, thermal images onto the HUD screen. Now, uh, you can see this picture. Uh, I would like to say that if you have some questions, uh, you can you can disturb me in between. No issues. Uh, I will be happy to respond. So uh, here uh, the scenario is that an aircraft is approaching a airstrip. It wants to land. Now, if uh, it is a flat runway, which is the scenario in case of A, uh, the airstrip is flat. And uh, the pilot is see, able to see the airstrip wide and clear. In this case, uh, the, when, when you all might have noticed that whenever the, uh, the aircraft is approaching the runway, it, it basically glides through at a constant speed. It's neither accelerating nor it is deaccelerating. So in case of a flat runway, as per the visual judgment of the pilot, there are chances that his actual glide scope will be overlapping the ideal glide scope and uh, he will be able to touch the airstrip at the point where it is actually required. However, if you see the scenario B, the scenario B is you have an upsloping runway and when you observe that upsloping runway visually from a distance, it will happen. It, it, there are chances that your actual glide scope or uh, the, the, the uh, glide slope or the path head on which you glide through to the touch point is lower than the ideal glide slope. And there is a third scenario wherein you have a down sloping runway. And uh, the, it also uh, it is the case of a uh, more wide and a narrow runway. So in case of a downsloping runway, uh, there are chances that your ideal glide path, uh, glide slope would be, actual glide slope would be above the ideal glide slope. So in this case, uh, there are there is a risk that you might overshoot the runway. So, uh, and your touch point might be somewhere that is beyond the ideal touch point on the airstrip and if the airstrip is not long enough to sustain your uh, your your uh, aheadness in the approach. Uh, it may lead to a catastrophe. And this you can see with the example. If 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 the aircraft misses uh, the runway during during approach, what might have happened? Might can happen. You might all have heard about a crash in Mangalore of a in Air India flight, which happened some years ago, and. Uh, basically show you the video. Is the video visible? It was the breaking up of the plane as it overshot the runway at Mangalore Airport that may have saved some of its passengers. The survivors were either thrown free or managed to climb out through gaps in the fuselage as it split apart and before the planes consumed it. There was a blast, perhaps a tire bursting as the plane landed, this man says. Within five seconds, there was fire and smoke all over. We looked up and saw an opening and crawled through it, says this man. The flight from Dubai to Mangalore was full of Indian migrant workers and their families returning from jobs in the Gulf. 
More than 20 children were on board. The plane, a Boeing 737, was only three years old. The airport, though, has a reputation as a challenging one for pilots. Its runways are carved out of hilly jungle country and are sited on a tabletop plateau with cliff-like drop-offs. The plane appears to have skidded off the end of the runway as the pilot tried to regain control and plowed into the gorge beyond. There are certain challenges when uh, when you approach an airport that's laid out the way this one is, and it's nothing unsafe, but you just have to really pay attention uh, be because there's you know, not as great a margin of error there. It's the beginning of the monsoon season in southern India, and the weather was wet, but visibility was adequate, and both pilots had experience at this airport, more than 80 landings there between them. Indian crash investigators joined by experts from Boeing will not uh, uh, Were you able to see the video? Am I audible? Yes, sir, audible. And video was uh, clearly visible, huh? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, this was a classic case wherein uh, it were chances that the that the that that, that the ideal uh, glide flow was overshot and uh, the touch point would have been uh, well beyond what should have been the actual touch point and uh, so so since since it was a tabletop airport. And the, 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 the aircraft uh, slided beyond the uh, limit and, and it fell into the gorge. Now, had HUD been there, how would it helped during the approach? Now, uh, in this image, it is basically a display of uh, head up display uh, symbology, and the, the, the upper circle you see is a aircraft reference symbol. It basically indicates where the aircraft uh, nose is headed. Then uh, you have the second symbol, a circle with a wing. This is called flight path symbol. The flight path symbol has a relation with the horizontal line which you see above uh, the, the, the aircraft uh, flight path symbol. This horizontal line, uh, basically the relation of this flight path symbol and the horizontal line indicates whether the aircraft is gaining height or it is losing height. If uh, this flight path symbol is below the horizon line, the pilot is sure visually that he is uh, uh, losing height and the ideal touch point which, is, which comes from the radar is 490 meters away. Then again, you have a third symbol, a crocodile's mouth. This crocodile mouth has a relation with the flight path symbol. If it is above the flight path symbol, in that case, it indicates that it is accelerating. And if it is below the flight path symbol, it indicates that it is deaccelerating. However, during the glide, ideally, this should be in parallel with the flight path symbol indicating neither acceleration nor the, neither deceleration. So in this way, visually the pilot is aware that how far he is from the touch point and in case whether he will be able to land at the right touch point or not and if there is some doubt, he can abort the landing and can again reapproach it. Another uh, scenario, if you see in this image, is that this is a foggy morning, and the the, the 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 aircraft symbol circle with wings, circle with wings, uh, and the straight line, uh, the straight line, if you see, uh, this straight line is the center mark of the aircraft. So during the tape off, the pilot is visually aware if he is off the center mark and can readjust his position before the final thrust. Another thing uh, is uh, during the takeoff, during the final takeoff, it may happen that the pitch of the aircraft is more than the 
regulate uh, more than than what is actually required and it sometimes leads into the striking of the tail of the aircraft to the ground so in this case a warning can be issued which is a visual indicator to the pilot that a tail strike is possible and he can take an informed decision regarding whether to continue with the thrust or to abort the flight for another attempt again uh, one of uh, one uh, when you are in the uh, when you are in the air there is a there is a mechanism called gimbal lock gimbal lock is basically a, a situation wherein you lose lose one degree of independence and you are uh, immersed into two degrees of independence and is unable to come out in this case this automatic declutter page can help the pilot to come out of the gimbal lock situation another uh, utility is during taxiing on a snowy night uh, the aircraft uh, with, with the help of such a display page is able to visualize uh, what are the limits of the air strip and where the center point is a and it can uh, it, it is very useful for the pilot during the taxiing phases one of the most important utility of hard up display is during dog fight when two fighters fight and in this case with the help of all the aircraft instrumentation the pilot is more aware in gauging where the enemy is is visually aware of who the enemy as well as his co co, co pilots as well as his co fighters and is more informed if you see this video uh, it will be more clear If you see uh, the enemy uh, aircraft is visible as a black dot, and it has been locked by the radar. So the radar is not visible. Sandeep uh, sir. As you see, during the dog fight, uh, the, the enemy aircraft has been logged. Ah, uh, Sandeep sir, hello. Yeah. Sir, the video was not visible. Audio was there, but we could not see anything. Okay, so uh, there might be some issue. Uh, it is basically a, a, a dog fight between two fighters, and uh, ultimately uh, the enemy was logged in. Uh, I will repeat it uh, kindly indicate if it is not visible is yet yeah yes sir is it visible no no sir could i share the entire screen i think huh? 
Yes, so once try that. So you can select the option of a tab also. Okay. And can open a window in a particular tab because that is best for video and animation. Okay. I am presenting my screen. Uh, let me know if it is available uh, visible now. Is it? Yes, available. Okay. You can see uh, in the black dot. On the black dot, there is there is there is the enemy aircraft. It is being uh, marked by the in the in the header display of the uh, of, of, of the source aircraft. It's a bit lazy actually, uh, but, uh, because the background is very changing very quickly. that with, uh, this visual tool was far more useful or helpful uh, with, uh, rather than the individual uh, gadgets which were available in the aircraft and he was visually able to lock the enemy fighter and it was knocked down. Now uh, what is head up display all about? Uh, this is the this is the one which we are currently which we have currently installed on the aircraft and uh, something which is very much available in the public domain and I can safely uh, tell a lot of things about it. However, as on date, uh, we are working on uh, newer versions of this thing, which 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 are more advanced uh, in terms of optical design, in terms of uh, other parameters. And and uh, we, we 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 will be, we will be we are hoping to install it. However, since it's a niche domain, lot of facilities are not available in the country. And uh, we as an institute are also in the process of uh, coming up with those things. Uh, however, the investments are huge, and so uh, it takes time. But the basic structure of head-up display is like this. It has basically an electronic block. The electronic block. Uh, is is something which uh, receives uh, all the uh, signals from the various uh, aircraft sensors and it converts it into an image. That image at the culmination of the electronics block is displayed on a display medium which can be a CRT, which can be a DMD or uh, which can be any other uh, display modality. That image is then with the help of this optical block is traversed through a folded optics and then it is displayed on these beam combiners. These beam combiners are a very critical component. They are so polished, so coated that they reflect only one wavelength which this display medium is giving me. In case of CRT it is around yellowish green which is 545 nanometer. The logic behind that yellowish green color is that the NVG goggles of the pilot are compatible to that particular wavelength. So only that particular wavelength is reflected by these beam combiners, rest all pass. And then uh, there is a CCD camera bracket which basically captures whatever is being seen by the pilot. Then you have the control panel. With the help of which a lot of functions of the aircraft can be controlled by the pilot. As I uh, told you, these are the three uh, modules, optical module, mechanical module and electronics module. 
as a philosophy the optical module has the task to receive what is being displayed by the electronics module traverse it through the folded optics and then display it on a transparent screen in a way in a collimated manner that the image is displayed at the infinity the mechanical module is a bridge between the electronics module and optical module and lot of work mechanical engineers have to do in terms of thermal management in terms of space management in terms of uh, 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 rigors of the aircraft because uh, since this particular device uh, how is housed at the main part of or, or the uh, it, it is at the main real estate of of the aircraft cockpit it has to be critical in terms of its clearances for the various line various ejection clearance lines for the pilot in case he has to an emergency exit so those all things are very critical and has to be taken care by the mechanical design the electronics module is more about catering the need of the display system and having a handshake with the aircraft uh, on board display processor or inbuilt display processor within the head up display so it has emi emc filters as i told you emi emc filtering is very critical because with 256 around 255 to 256 lrus in the cockpit it should not happen that the electromagnetic interference of your device disturbs any other device in the cockpit and so those levels are to be maintained as per military standards and what i mean by emc is that obviously if there are 256 devices some bit of interference is being generated by all of them and the sum total of all interferences should be uh, uh, the device should be designed in a manner that the sum total of all electromagnetic interferences should not affect the performance of your device then we have a motherboard which basically manages power low voltage power supply board which basically manages uh, since the aircraft uh, usually the aircraft gives you a 28 volt dc so you have to convert all these voltages so for ic's for controllers for uh, dc to dc converters whatever requirement they have then we have a high voltage assembly since our current electronics module consists of a crt because uh, the, the want of the brightness which is required from a head up display is scattered by uh, CRTs only as on date. So CRT is used and, and, and that high CRT requires high voltages uh, which, which are catered to a high voltage assembly. Then uh, for, a, for, a, for, a, for the brightness, uh, for judging the ambient brightness and making decisions accordingly regarding the symbology brightness to cater the camera requirements, we have a ABC sensor board. You have deflection cards to drive the CRT. You have a signal processing board to process the entire signals and uh, requisite handshaking. And then uh, there are two control panels in case of HJT and one control panel in case of LCA. HJT is basically a trainer aircraft, which is a two-seater one. And so in HJT, uh, the trainee is at the front seat and the trainer is at the back seat. And so you need to have a repeat, hard repeater also at the back seat wherein the trainer can uh, see what, what the trainee is seeing and can override him in case of any emergency. This is basically the optical uh, block design, uh, which, 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 which has an objective cell and a folding mirror, as well as a field flattener. This is the design of the beam combiners. We, we currently are using the uh, twin beam combiners. However, the objective and the long pending demand of the forces is to have a holographic uh, beam combiner. That is a single a single uh, uh, mirror beam combiner, which is a, which basically gives you a wider field of view. But there are issues with regard to development and CSI was working on a huge way to work uh, on those technologies and we have committed investments from CSIR in this regard and I hope in the coming future we will be able to develop DOEs as well as holographic beam combiners. When uh, you see uh, once Dr. Kalam said uh, he was at one point of time uh, was the chairman of the review committee of HUD for LCA and he said that if you reduce the weight and shape uh, of uh, the head by 1 kg, I will give you 1 kg cold. 
this is how much it cost if you increase the weight of the head up display by a kg so uh, this is how uh, the electronics is packed in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the entire system then this is a cad model of the optical module assembly the crt is fitted at the back and then uh, folding optics obviously has a mirror role to play and this folded optics uh, the crt is uh, focused on a, on a mirror and then it is folded back towards the top desiccator is basically for moisture related issues Uh, another uh, CAD model is for. Uh, if you, uh, I just want to show you to sh uh, to highlight how tightly things are packed, and uh, in, within these parameters, you have to pass all the tests regarding environmental, thermal, and uh, vibrational requirements. So things need to be really sturdy. And uh, thermal is a big issue. Thermal management uh, we have been doing very nicely. Our design is without a fan, which is which is a, a remarkable achievement, and we were the pioneers in this domain. Otherwise, prior to CSIO heard globally, uh, the hearts used to have fan for cooling purposes. And the top cover, you see, uh, this is this is a this is a metal plate basically uh, to to reduce the EMI impacts for ceiling. And then all these seals, uh, which are not well uh, visualized here, uh, they they also cater to those requirements. And uh, finally, uh, the system integration, uh, wherein the entire device is packed into a single unit. And this is the mounting tray, uh, which, which basically uh, hinges onto the uh, aircraft uh, assembly. And uh, this is how uh, basically uh, hard in a way is a dumb terminal. Uh, it does not have an intelligence of its own. It it basically is given uh, the 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 X Y Z information by the mission computer which is the main computer of the aircraft uh, we can also have an intelligent hut which have these display features inbuilt but however uh, in case of ajt since the mission computer is an imported one uh, we have we don't have that flexibility however in case of lca uh, it is more tightly bonded with the mission so uh, I think I have already detailed these things. These are the compositions of hard electronics. Uh, these are the compositions. Uh, this CRT is a very special one. It's just a three-inch CRT, uh, monochrome three-inch CRT. But 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 the requirement of uh, of of having a rapid decompression from fifty thousand feet to five thousand feet. And the level of brightness against the sun, against the uh, open open sky, those all things require uh, make this particular type of CRT important, and it costs a lot. It's more than three lakh rupees. Then uh, high voltage power supply, low voltage power supplies for various power requirements. These are converted from 28 volt DC. We have a data entry panel and a RDEP as I detailed earlier. And then uh, these are the basic various signal processing tasks which are to be performed on the uh, main card. Now, what are the design challenges? As I already, already told you that as far as size is concerned, we are given fixed parameters as per the aircraft frame. The aircraft frame is not going to change for us. And since this Head up display is just in front of the pilot. We need to take care of the ejection clearance line and the nose clearance line in case a pilot decides to eject. So, size is a major constraint, weight is a bigger constraint. 
you need to have a lightweight design which satisfies the overall aircraft design. Then your device should be robust. I will show you a video of the maiden test flight of our air herd, which, which was basically unfortunate in terms of that, that the AJT crashed. And, but, but, but the head up display was uh, working fine up to the last moment. I, I, I can't show you that video, but uh, that is worth thing. Then we have the fanless cooling uh, design. We don't have any fans, so uh, that is one thing. The, the entire body, the entire body fins acts as a uh, heat sink. Then uh, we need to ensure compliance to various mill standards for environmental. Uh, we, we follow uh, mill standard 8110D in case of environmental requirements and 462 and 461C in case of EMIMC requirements. The symbology brightness is a USP of CSIO heard. Uh, we offer uh, one of the globally best uh, symbology brightness. And we, we uh, however, further we have tweaked the design of HJT36 in a manner that, that it also is able to show substantial things even against the sun. Then we had a wide field of view, and this is one major problem sun glare. Sun glare is uh, when, when sun is at the top. Uh, it 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 might uh, make 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 the heart head screen glow like sun. So that we have uh, compensated with some design changes at the mechanical level as well as introducing some sun guard plate. I think uh, these are the various features uh, which can be uh, which 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 uh, we will consider later on. Uh, compact design suiting to the LCA cockpit as well as HPT cockpit. While field of view, field of view is a major thing. Uh, we offer an instantaneous field of view means a view at a particular head position, uh, which is 20 degree in azimuth, uh, right left, and 18 degree elevation. However, the total field of view uh, for the full uh, motion of the uh, neck is around 25. Lightweight, noiseless operation. Uh, we also offer multi-mode symbology writing operations. Uh, then we have a built-in test as well as an electronic standby side, which I will discuss later on. These are the various modes of operation of the heart. Uh, one is the stroke mode. It is a pure cursive mode wherein you just see the symbology which I have shown to you till now. Uh, superimposed on an outside world view. The second is a raster mode. Raster mode is basically for night flying wherein uh, during the night operations the flare camera output is displayed on the hard screen. Then you have a mixed mode too. Mixed mode is basically about something with uh, a raster video in the background and a minimal symbology in the foreground which is displayed during the flyback period of the raster sequence. Then finally you have a SBS mode which is called stand by side mode. This particular mode is meant for display of uh, uh, in case the mission computer of the aircraft fails to supply the signals but the power supply of the aircraft is okay. So in this case an electronic SBS is helpful which basically gives uh, the pitch angle to the pilot, uh, an idea of the pitch angle to the pilot, and uh, it is harmonized with the airframe, and it helps in landing in a way, which I will show you later. This was the Marin test flight of uh, head-up display uh, of CSIO, uh, which, which happened uh, for uh, HJT-36. You can see uh, the pilot's voice in the background. This is a test flight, especially to judge the hard LCA. Uh, Uh, 
might have seen uh, this uh, video uh, this video was actually the first test flight of uh, head up display for a jt 36 by csio and during this flight uh, basically the main aim of the pilots was to test the performance of the heart and uh, a lot of things you might have heard however uh, this particular aircraft had a fateful uh, when when they tried some uh, uh, stilling maneuver in the in 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 the air. There were some issues, and uh, so it finally crashed. And actually, um, this particular uh, thing took the program back by around four to uh, five years. Uh, so this is how uh, things get delayed in case of any issues with with your device or with the head-up display. And then again, uh, you know, um, two pilots were ejected and lot of issues happened and queries went on but now again this program is coming up and 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 uh, we we hope that once it goes into production our head also will uh, be an integral part of it however head up display from csio is successfully flying in case of lca uh, and it is part of the standard equipment which will go into production now uh, I talked about a built-in test equipment in the electronics signal processing part. So uh, basically robustness is a very important design parameter and uh, each LRU in the aircraft cockpit is expected to either perform or perish without impacting the performance of any other LRU. So in this case, uh, our head-up display also have a continuous running inbuilt health monitoring wherein uh, we, we, we check the power supplies on, on startup. We continuously monitor the subsystem health. We also ensure uh, the phosphor protection of the CRT. We also have features of automatic brightness control in case uh, the symbology, the pilot wants to do so. And then uh, there is a provision for automatic shutdown in case any of our subsystem uh, uh, subsystem uh, failure is noted. Obviously, uh, we we have gone in for uh, for a for a for a controller based design because uh, the requirements are not very uh, computational heavy. And secondly, uh, we also need uh, we also need to have mill grade uh, components which are able to aptly perform in the domain of minus fifty five degree to plus twenty five. So uh, those components are obviously being costly, but also their availability and uh, uh, there are a lot of other issues. So a lot of commercial things are not viable for us. And in case of built-in test 
equipment. This is the basically algorithm which we follow, uh, which which continuously monitors the various power supplies, the various signals, uh, and 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 in case in case in case um, if if there is a signal failure from the machine computer end, so input X Y signals are not coming. In that case, we have to ensure two things: one to protect the phosphor of the CRT from burning, and number two to switch into the electronic SBS mode, wherein uh, where which will which will help provide some help to the pilot. So uh, the other uh, other thing which I've done personally is the electronic standby site. It is a mechanism which is a great help to the pilot in case of failure of a video generation computer. Electronic SBS is an internally generated display page. It is implemented electronically uh, and is selectable from the data entry panel as well as in case when 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 the when the automated uh, switch off of uh, um, MC signals are detected by the byte system. So it is basically an electronic SBS. However, traditionally there was also a concept of a uh, optical SBS. That optical SBS is useful even in cases in in the cases wherein uh, where basically uh, even the power supply of the aircraft is failed. So, but the issue with that optical SBS was, it was static. It was not dynamic. It was basically a graticule based uh, overlay within the optical system. And it was lit with the help of a battery. So this electronic SPS is useful. It is dynamic, but the only impediment is that the, the the HUD should be performing well. In case the HUD power supply has some issues, its electronics have some issues, then this SPS will not work. That is the flip side of this. So uh, it is basically a crosshair symbology, uh, which 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 basically displays a crosshair symbol. And uh, the, the 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 range is from to zero milliradian to two forty milliradian uh, with a setting of one milliradian apart. It is starts starts at three point one degree below the LFD longitudinal fuselage datum line, which which is basically a line that that integrates the aircraft and the, the design parameters uh, with 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 the fuselage. So it is well below, and the utility of this SBS is that. It gives a pilot uh, the idea about the pitch angle, which helps him in landing in case uh, there are issues with the mission computer of the aircraft. So this is what we, we basically designed an ADSP based system, and uh, um, over the time we have improvised the design, and uh, we have also used the FPGA chip, uh, which is integrated with the ADSP controller. And right now, which I can't disclose, is that we are using a single integrated chip, uh, which 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 basically uh, which basically uh, satisfies the needs of both uh, uh, the processing and uh, in fact this SBS has a lot of promising future. We can convert the entire this SBS module which we are right now using just for uh, the the standby symbology into a complete whole soul display processor. Uh, which which can just take signals directly from the aircraft sensor instead of requirement of having a video display computer. Uh, but but for that I, basically what we need is a, a indigenized mission computer too, and the country is working on it. There are a lot of uh, CSIO uh, as an institute has benefited a lot from this project, uh, and uh, we we basically are not restricted to head up displays. In fact, our partner BEL has also benefited a lot. And uh, today, BEL has around 12 to 14 LRUs uh, of various types, which are mechanical, electronic, which are which are flying in the LC aircraft. We are working with uh, other agencies also. Uh, we we did lights also for the LCA, uh, wing and fin navigation lights, landing and taxi lights, and those lights. Have further found applications into naval applications. So we are on to Vikramaditya. We are we are we are working for some devices, some lighting solutions for it, uh, some systems, and now we are also into submarines. A lot of work is going on. Again, a very important vertical which CSIO has found is optical coatings. So optical coatings vertical is going very fine because uh, as far as HAL is concerned. The cost and facility cost, as well as maintenance cost of optical equipment, was phenomenal for them because they they have to send everything to the Russia or uh, 
the pay, the sourcing country for any any issues and it used to cost a lot but with facilities at csio uh, now we are getting incrementally a lot of projects from various uh, different agencies to work towards what the prime minister of the country and megas is towards an atmanirbhar bharat now uh, we are no we, we are more of an open organization and uh, we we are trying to find our applications in civil aviation automobiles railways and beyond this also as earlier uh, speaker uh, some of uh, from my institute might have talked about we are working for delhi metro we are working uh, in seismic areas and uh, and and over the time we are trying to integrate things in a manner that uh, we become a liable or, or a reliable partner for various technology needs one of our mandates is also to serve the society so on that aspects also this particular institute is doing a lot of job works and and uh, hope uh, we will we will contribute towards the growth of the nation so i think uh, this is sufficient uh, it's 11:55 and at least 5 minutes we should have some for some question answer session if there are any thank you thank you sir so participants if you have any questions kindly ask or you can write in the chat box Uh, thank you, Sandeep sir. There are no questions. Yeah. Thank you all. Uh, I am sure that excitement would have been further more if, if we would have met in person. Uh, but still, uh, I think I would have, I would have been I have been able to pass my message. And if there are any issues, uh, I am I am putting my email ID in my chat box. You can always ping me uh, for any interaction or or discussion. Thank you. Thank you, sir.